Hello. Hello there. We are the independent researchers in life education and we would love to thank all our supporters, our viewers, for the motivation you gave us and for the books you have been sending to us. And the feedback as well. Yeah, we are going to go through the books we have just received. And uh, these books are from our supporters and uh, we would like to thank them very much. We have uh, a lot of information and uh, we are very grateful for them. The first book is um, Tell Us About My Life, Keron Elamastani, Plains of the life of Leonard Awal and this uh, this book is the second time we are receiving it, it was uh, written by uh, Kirsti Ihama. The second book is African history. It has 279 pages it's by Roland Oliver and uh, Fage. So in English it's written a short history but uh, in Finnish it's just written African history printed by Ottawa in 1970. Uh, this other book is also by Kirsti Bihamaki. It tells about Namibia. It was written 10 years after the, the, other, the first book. That she wrote tells about black Namibian time a shepherd or leader. It must be about leadership, the Namibian leadership. It was about, it was still about this uh, Leona, our uh, childhood life in Namibia. It's also in Finnish and uh, it has a lot of information about Namibia. This was written by Ma Marty Tenkanen. The book is about Nuori Pietari Kurvinen, who was foster father to Nanguroshi, the first African who came to Finland and she went back with her Rosa Clay's foster parents. She was baptized in Finland and she was babysitting. We have already received this by Christy Ihamaki and it's about Magdalena and Erastusham in Namibia. It's the photos were taken by Mati Sepala of the beautiful couple from Namibia. And the other book is Okavango. Okavango, we have seen a lot of uh, documentary, not by Namibians, but by international people. So Okavango is a beautiful place. This book talks about um, the rose plant. It's written by two Likiyan women and it tells about the exotic environment of the black people, how they live, just uh, the life of a white who, who had the challenges of teaching as, as a European, like, and the, the cultural differences that uh, she faced. Sounds a bit interesting. Yeah. Quite interesting. The other one was about um, they left to a very, very far away place. It, um, it tells about Amboma life, uh, life in the Ambo, Amboma. And um, these are the people who live in northern Namibia. It's meant for clubs and people who, who go for camping to learn about different ways of living. I think like um, care for clubs. Right. And those who are in the in, in the in the missionary in the missionary. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They can see they can study and see what they they, they expect to find there. What they need to know before they go for the missionary work. In this photo you can see it's showing uh, how the black people celebrated what is that time. I don't know. Yeah. That's why it's called They Left to a Faraway Place. There is a book about Matthias Kondoboro. Matthias Kondoboro, this is a second print and it was written by Tuliki Yantunen. And here the first sentence says that Matthias Kondoboro is not the one who wrote this book in 1964 talk about Livingstone and Uganda. Skondoboro, if I remember right, he was from Okavango. Uh, Matthias Skondoboro was the first Okavango who came to Finland. And uh, it's talk about fruit fountain, it's a town in Namibia, and about Finnish field and um, girls who works in the field. This, these books talk about our culture. We should let them write their own history and cultures. This it has uh, so many photos. I didn't get to to see what it was about, but uh, it has pictorial pictorial photos of Africa. I think it's also about missionary work, and um, it's a very interesting book. And 
it has so many photos. This is Okawango. Yeah, is learning how to carry a baby. It's <laughs> a very interesting book. But I think it tells about like living in the in the middle of hunger in Africa. This was printed in 1966 in Wales. This is about Namibia and neighbors. The book is by Penti Toivonen and uh, the photos are taken by Riley Toivonen and in Finnish is Namibia Sana Purisa. And uh, there are many interesting things like pictures of uh, a nest. They are I mean, building a station or something. This book was written in 1978. That's uh, a long time ago. This small book tells about uh, the first uh, Namibian elections, like political elections, after they got independence. Uh, it's written by Kirsti. And she talks about the election observations. Most people who were there, they were Finnish, especially from the, from the UN. They were sent by the UN, like this, like Hanu, Hanu. And um, it's also, by then, it was Marty Artisari, the president. Not yet. Not yet. I think he works for UN. He worked. He worked. It was after, after the elections, he became the... Yeah. Yeah. So it um, talks about the very first election after independence, which were held in November 1989. And uh, she was in Namibia for almost 11 years before. She, she did this more from oh, Amboma. Amboma. She even talks of those Namibians who travel from other places mm. to come and come and vote. Like they were, they were encouraged to come and take part. And she talks of the many challenges that uh, they faced. They faced uh, during, during that time of arranging the past election, you know, believing that they are independent and they were even taught on how to carry out the, the election observation. I think uh, but most people are Chinese. Yeah, many people have lived abroad in Namibia because life was not so promising in, in Namibia before independence. The Musta Sudan Rakaus by Kulki Hataka. It's a book about uh, black heart love, like it's drawn here. And uh, it tells about Kulki Hataka, who has been twice in Namibia. She wanted to answer the following questions as a young person. Is it true that Africa nobody smells, birds don't sing, women don't love? The book answers these questions. But in this book, you also learn Oshuambo language. Like we are meme, eh? We are po now, eh? Ino mo na usponga monjila. Like how are you, meme? Like a tulitko? Have you come? Eh? Eh means hula, yes. And walala po kuku, uhala po. Did you sleep well? Yeah, uhala po. Uhala po. Okay. So you can read this book and you will speak a Shuambo language in one month. Mm -hmm. The next book. It's about Mitamina Nai Matkalani, what I have seen on my journey to China. Matka Hava Noiga Kinasta. The missionaries were also in China. African Cat Coaster or Hidden Treasures by O. E. Narhi in uh, 1930. Oh, these are the, the artifacts from Namibia. They are somewhere in Helsinki. So they used to be in Kumbu Kumbu Museum. Yeah, so. In 2017, we had a digital discussion with the retired missionaries on how to return the artifacts to Namibia. They seem to have a logistical challenge and some of the artifacts believe to have supernatural power which may have issues to cross the borders. The artifacts are public assets and they do not belong to any individual or any connections because the discussion was a little bit weird and the decision about the repatriation should not come from the missionaries. It has to come from political people. But it seems that the missionaries already set up the strategy on how to, to go about it. Although I, I don't believe they are in their position to make it that decision because it's a public asset. But they already decided to put it on digital, like on the internet, social media and so on. The Namibian youth need this idea to unlock their creativity, to start to produce because those are the industrial items that people used to make, which were banned. Everybody must write about their stories. Right? Because they understand better, they understand and they know 
report would work better for them. And then they will not misinterpret, misinterpret yeah? yes, and misunderstand the, the culture or why people do things the way they, the do. Way they do. Yeah, and the why because some of the story we read, our musical instruments were not good for many Europeans. They, they, they find our culture weird. Yeah, they tell about how living in a weird way of life. But from our own point of view, that's it's what, normal. It's, it's normal. Really our culture is what came from our womb. We were born with it, so we just have to practice what we know, not what other people know. Just in the same way, we cannot come here and start writing about the Finnish culture and how weird it is. We find mm. it normal for them, and their way of living. We understand, we try, we try to understand why they do things the way they yeah. and how they live the way they live. But not to criticize not or to blame, not to change them. Not to, yes, not yeah. to change them. Well, because we develop with time. And we are all different. And when we combine those differences, that's when we can live together in uh, happiness, uh -huh. with love as human beings, not to laugh at other people's way of living. Of living. Yeah. Uh -huh. This book tells about my African uh, open land. Yeah, like big farm. It's, um, uh, it's written by Kuliki and it tells about uh, one missionary called Ale Koivu. It tells uh, about many, many years, like 100 years, 1873 to 1973. Yeah. But uh, about 100 years period of time. Mm. It, it talks of Kale's life in Amboma in a period of 28 years, even though the story is about 100 years, you understand? 100 years. But Kale worked as a missionary for 28 years in Amboma. The work of Kale for a period of 100 years, he, he lived for 100 years, but it's the work of Kale for 100 years, but um, he, <coughs> he lived in a uh, and um, he was in contact with Amboma for a period of years. Long before the missionary work started, he, it tells that he, he, he noticed or he was interested in, in making the life of the Amboma people better. And this is what we just talked about, like, He's not from there, but he's trying to make their lives. I think, so I think through preaching and missionary work. Mm. And I think more with education. I think, I think it's more with education. And uh, in the 100 years, he, he worked between the Ambo and Kavangon. In between one church, or is it what? Within, within one, one church. church. So it's, um, it's not so big book. It's around 100 and um, 30, about 130 pages. It's a good book to read yeah. if you want to understand about the missionary work. We have uh, another researcher here who is coming. Missionary work has been good and bad at the same time. What we can borrow from this missionary, they, they were focused. They had a mission because uh, they traveled long distances, they were away from families for a long time, and they tried to establish whatever they believed in. Yeah. to wherever they went, all of the challenges that, that they They established mm -hmm. themselves very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually what I like about them, their children... They were not, yes, they were because, not put in that culture which they found there. Yeah, what they wanted to change. Yes. They didn't want their children to get that. They have their own education that they ship there. Yes. And for the children to learn their own history mm -hmm. and experience, yes, not yes. other people's things yes and then they ate their own food mm -hmm. that's also one thing now knowing the, the history mm -hmm. and the experience the history i'm talking about here is biological history you understand the womb the womb yeah okay the books are so many we are not going to okay. not be able to tell everything about them yeah we want to give this focus story so we are not going to tell about all these books